Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt or Riveteers haste deck featuring four copies of Ziatoras Envoy as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 4 mana 5 4 Vyashina Warrior with Trample that when it deals damage to the opponent will provide card advantage by letting us cast the top card of our library for free as long as its mana value is less than or equal to the damage dealt by our Envoy. And if we get a clean attack and for 5 damage, we can play any spell we reveal off the top for free, as our curve tops out at 5 mana with our 2 copies of Warchief. And then we can also Blitz our Envoy for 5 mana, putting in play with haste, and then when it dies we get to draw a card, and we have to sacrifice it end of turn. So that's one way to connect with our Envoy right away, but mostly we're looking to give it haste using either our Reckless Stormseeker, which also gives it one additional power, gets even better during the night time, and then we've got our three partners, which can put plus one counters on it and give it haste. So that's one way to connect with our Envoy right away and get immediate card advantage. Then we can also potentially play a turn 3 Envoy, using a Kalein Reclusive Painter which enters with a treasure token, and then we'll put plus one counters on creatures that were cast using those treasure tokens. And that's also one way to set up our dream start of turn 2 Kalein, turn 3 partners, so it comes into play with a plus one counter, we'll now put three counters on our Kalein, and then on the following turn on turn 4, play Envoy, put three counters on it with our partners and give it haste, and then attack for a ton of damage, potentially finding another card off the top. And then looking through the rest of our deck, we're also a great Fable of the Mirror Breaker deck, not only because the card selection is useful for finding our different combo pieces, but mostly because Reflection of Kiki Jiki is amazing with a lot of the creatures in our deck. We can maybe copy a Blood Tithe Harvester, so we can use it as repeatable removal, taking out opposing creatures, making more and more blood tokens in the process. But we can also give our Reflection haste right away, using either Stormseeker or Partners, so we can activate it the turn it transforms, so we don't have to wait that one extra turn, which can make all the difference. And then copying our creatures like Envoy and especially Warchief is pretty sweet, as we'll get to gain 3 when it enters, and leave behind a 4-4 Rhino token when it dies, while we get a hasty attack in with our big Trampler. So that's great. And then we also have two copies of Moonvale Regent as our final creature, a 4-4 Dragon with Flying, and when it dies it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of colors among permanents we control. So if we control an Envoy, that's three colors, can deal three damage on the way out, and whenever we cast a spell we may discard our hand, and if we do, draw a card for each of that spell's colors. So once again, if we cast a three-color spell with our Moonvale Regent in play, we can discard our hand to draw three, so even if we're empty-handed, it's a very nice way to refuel. And then giving our large dragon with flying haste using Stormseeker or partners is also quite effective. And then to round out our deck, we've got some cheap spot removal with a full set of Voltage Surge. Can maybe sacrifice a blood token or a treasure token to deal 4 damage at instant speed, playing this over the Sorcery Speed Strangle. And then at 2 mana, we've got Infernal Grasp to deal with larger creatures that may survive our Voltage Surge, even if it costs us a little bit of life to do so. And our mana base of course includes our Proving Ground for mana fixing, and then some creature lands with the Den of the Bugbear and Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which also happen to be the colors we want early on, so much better than having the green creature land, and then a Swamp and a Mountain as basics, all 12 pathways, and then two Deathcap Glade and two Rockfall Veil vale to round out our mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a... Promising hand, if we can hit our land drops here, and um, don't have any early interaction really, so could be in trouble if our opponent's off to an aggressive start. But we're looking at maybe turn 3 Stormseeker into turn 4 Envoy. Opponent's turn 2 Aspirants, growing Cleric. Kalein's interesting too. I think we're still playing Stormseeker. I doubt our opponent's double blocking, and if they do, that's fine by me. Apparition, Exile, Stormseeker, fair enough. Alright, so now things are not looking as great. Could maybe double spell Kalein and Harvester, so Harvester can take out Aspirants. Don't want to play partners on an empty board, and Envoy seems poor in the face of another Apparition, for instance. Could also go Kalein plus Fable, although we don't make use of the treasure 
as it wouldn't get an extra counter. So I think a lane plus harvester is going to be my play. And then not going to use the treasure. And then next turn we can see if we want to maybe even blitz the envoy. Monk. So yeah, opponent seems like a pretty low curve white deck, so I don't expect him to have too many cards like Apparition, but probably playing four of those. Gets rid of Harvester. Aspirin probably pumps itself now. So yeah, we're pretty far behind here. Need to draw some removal. Infernal Grasp will do. Okay, so now kind of liking Fable and then pass with Infernal Grasp available, which can kill an Apparition and make a blocker. But it's going to be hard to get our Envoy online as we're pretty far behind on board. Clarion Spirit to start making Flyers times two. Hoping they make kind of a reckless attack. Alright, so kill the bigger apparition. Still at six life, so let's see, we can eat aspirants, double block apparition, fall to one. But then the spirit is quite threatening. We would lose the shaman, get back a 2-2 blocker. Partners has reach. So then I would have four blockers to my opponent's five attackers. So we would still need to draw something. But what's the alternative here? I think this is probably still the best we can do. Opponent killing Kalein instead of our Shaman. Another Fable, so... Yeah, I don't think Envoy is happening. And then probably discard Fable. Hope to draw like Land plus Voltage Surge, maybe. Well, that's Land plus Voltage Surge. So... Play Partners. And then counter on probably the Shaman or the Illusion. Let's go with uh, Shaman, I guess. Pass, and then hope the opponent goes for an all-out attack. Aspirants. Okay. Counter on Spirits. And our opponent shoves. Okay, so we should be able to line up some good blocks now. Like so. Kill spirit token. And all of a sudden the opponent's board disintegrates and we're still at one life. Untap, Envoy, we can give haste. Could also give our Reflection haste so we can activate it right away. Which is better here. Probably just Envoy. And this can attack. Want to leave back at least two blockers. So all those can attack. Points at 17. Yeah, this seems fine. And takes it, falls to three. And what do we hit? Stormseeker. Okay, not sure how Mono White gets out of this. And the answer, they don't. Well, there was some timely top deck there with the Voltage Surge. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's a little 
light on lands perhaps, but we do have some cheap interaction, and then Stormseeker into Envoy would be the perfect start. Opponent also Jund. Okay, can play a turn to Harvester. And if we were to miss our land drop, I might have to go digging with our blood token. But with 26 lands, one hopes that that's not going to be necessary. Opponent with a shakedown heavy, so this could be a fight rigging deck, in which case I might want to hang on to some interaction. Although it is tempting to just play either Stormseeker or Fable. I think we will Infernal Grasp here, attack. And then I still have Voltage Surge for another Shakedown Heavy, if that shows up later. Okay, opponent kills Harvester, that's fine. And Innkeeper to play. Okay, and then given that we're missing lands, I might prefer Fable over Stormseeker here even though the upside on a hasty Envoy is higher. Just need to make sure we keep hitting land drops. Opponents get their own Fable. Don't know if I'll be able to afford to kill their Shaman. So what to discard now? My hand's not bad, could maybe get rid of a second Fable but I'm honestly pretty happy with everything else. So, yeah, maybe one Fable can go still. And then Stormseeker can give itself hastes, attack with both. And if they were to double block, I can Voltage Surge. Opponent takes it. Might be tempted to Voltage Surge their Shaman to deny a bit of mana. Opponent with Valky slash Tybalt, so yeah, that definitely points towards fight rigging as well. Another Fable. Well, our opponents can be able to make a lot of mana here regardless. So if they have another Tybalt slash Valky in hand, they can cast it. Surge does hit Planeswalkers as well. So that's a reason not to fire it off, maybe go for Infernal Grasp on their Shaman instead. Yeah, we'll deny them the mana. And then I can play Hasty Envoy thanks to Stormseeker, still make a treasure so we can Voltage Surge. And take it from there. So play Envoy. Could also give Reflection Haste to activate Reflection, but this seems better. And does Stormseeker one attack? Sure, we have another one. If they double block, I'm fine with a trade for their Shaman token. Opponent lets it happen. Falls to four. Let's see what we reveal. A land. Okay, then uh, we'll pass and potentially Voltage Surge the Shaman would potentially prevent them from casting a Tybalt here. Although even if they do, we might still be able to kill them with War Chief and Reflection. Opponent ditches fight rigging since it's not gonna get there. And do we see Tybalts? I suspect we do. Yep. So that exiles Envoy. And then we'll have to do some math here. Okay, so Tybalt would be on two loyalty, so we can finish it off. Next turn I can play War Chief. Let's say we killed one of their creatures, play War Chief, can activate Reflection, give War Chief haste. That should be enough trample damage to kill them, so I'm just gonna kill their Shaman here. Untap, play War Chief. Could blitz it as well, but no need when we can give it haste with Stormseeker. Reflection for hastes. 
and our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, that's a lot of trample damage with haste coming in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. If we find a third land especially, can curve Kalein into maybe turn 3 Envoy, or we can play Stormseeker for haste first. Opponent Red White Burn, turn 1 Kumano. Okay, there we go. And against Red White, they don't have a ton of answers for Envoy. They might have a uh, copy of Brutal Cathar, that's the main concern. Although then we could still kill it with Voltage Surge. So it might be fine to go for Envoy here. As opposed to Stormseeker. But again, both seem reasonable. So what if I do go for Stormseeker here? Can hit for 4. Or we can leave Stormseeker back to block Kumano. And then just attack with a 2-powered Kalein. If I just play a large Envoy, they attack, they might have burn spells to finish it off. If not, we can pull ahead thanks to the card advantage it provides. But if they do have Brutal Gathar, then they get to hit us for 5. That's not ideal. So I could see the advantage of Stormseeker here. And then I'm not gonna use my treasure just yet. And then I think we just send a 2-powered Kalein and leave Stormseeker to block the hasty 2-2. They could also have a Royal Eruption here, so that's the drawback of this line versus playing Envoy. And yep, that's what they have. Okay, so I guess we'll take 5 since I can't afford to sack my treasure. Land is good. So now do we want to use our treasure for one more toughness and power? It's probably worth it. And uh, we're not gonna blitz, I don't think. Although blitzing is also an option, but then we would lose the envoy end of turn. So we'll try this approach. And then I'll leave Kalein back, since the one damage is not worth it. I might end up jumping, since we have a backup copy. And then now I can Voltage Surge in response to a potential uh, Brutal Cathar, so that would no longer exile the Envoy. And then here... I'm probably fine killing the Aspirin before it triggers. And then Infernal Grasp can blow up a double block. So that should work out. Another Infernal Grasp, so let us attack. Could maybe also attack with Kalein, since they're kind of incentivized to double block Envoy. And we're just going to play another Kalein here, most likely. What do we hit? A nice Workshop Warchief. Yeah, that's going to be hard to beat. Play Kalein, pass it back. Still have our Infernal Grasp available. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, we could kill a Brutal Cathar before it exiles anything, and our large creatures will take over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Don't love this hand, which is filled with removal, which would be much better suited on the draw. But I don't think it's a mulligan either. Just gotta hope we're up against an aggressive creature deck where we can put these removal spells to use. Turn 1 planes, I guess, bodes well. Turn 1 usher. Probably still fine playing a harvester first, then we can uh, voltage surge plus harvester next turn, maybe start attacking. Turn this into a race. Portable hole deals with harvester nicely. So I will play Harvester and pass, but I am planning to kill Usher before it gets a chance to attack and boast. Just want to see if they maybe play an Aspirant we can take out in response. Opponent would move to combat, so let's take that out. It's going to be a second main phase 3-drop, so most likely Spellbinder. Yep. 
probably goes for Infernal Grasp, which is more expensive. And then, yeah, opponents up a few cards here. So go to find one of our heavy hitters. And then we can stay on four lanes for the time being, maybe use our blood tokens. And, uh... Yeah, do I want a Voltage Surge Spellbinder and just attack for three? That does seem reasonable. Want to hang on to Harvester in case we find a Reflection of Kiki Jiki. So I uh, can keep using it as removal. If they have Wandering Emperor, I might regret this line of play. And then I'm hanging on to Infernal Grasp so we can kill Adeline if that shows up, which otherwise requires us to sacrifice an artifact for Voltage Surge. Yeah, opponent does have Wandering Emperor, as we suspected. So then just using Harvester as removal would have worked out better. But uh, Zeator's Envoy is not bad. And I could play it, or I could Blitz it. If we Blitz it, then we're probably just going face in the hopes of hitting something good. Versus playing it and then hoping it doesn't get removed and then we can clear a path with Infernal Grasp and maybe keep reaping the rewards. If they have like a Skyclave Apparition it's bad, Brutal Cathar at least we can kill to get our Envoy back but then it's not going to be attacking right away. So close call I think we just play it since I need the board presence and I'll hang on to my lands. Yeah, Skyclave right on cue. And then this shit. Emperor can plus. Partners is not bad. So, opponent knows about Infernal Grasp. If I kill Apparition, we get a 4 4 back, which at least blocks reasonably well. If I play partners, they put counter on Apparition, attack, train, and we're pretty far behind, so I think we have to pass with Infernal Grasp available. They're reasonable to play out the lands now in case of another Spellbinder. It's gonna be Protector Shields. That's gonna force the issue here. Opponent still plusing. But now Partners makes it so our Illusion still gets to attack reasonably well. Go after Emperor. Emperor down. And uh, we'll hang on to the land, I think. Opponent's close to activating Cave to attack in the air. At least we're still at a healthy 16 life. Adeline shows up. Can block the token at least. And then Hasty Fable. Looks good. Probably time to start digging with our blood tokens as well. And I probably leave the illusion back to block Adlin. I guess they can still block here, thanks to Protector Shield. But I think I still want the treasure. Bone is just gonna take it, not take any risks. And then I'll probably use this end of turn as opposed to doing it now. Spellbinder is going to see two lanes. That is a flying threat, but we do have a partners. And uh, only prevents one damage, so a two power first strike still beats a 3 1 spellbinder. Okay. Get to loot with Fable. And uh, yeah, Harvester with Hastes is quite appealing, although we probably want to keep it to go with our Reflection of Kiki Jiki. We'll just discard one land. Kalein the draw. So we'll play Kalein, 
plus Stormseeker using probably just one treasure. And then I would like to pump our Shaman to keep attacking. And this can pump partners. Attack for seven, if they could double block, that's fine by me. And then next turn we can make a hasty harvester, thanks to Fable, and start killing the opponent's stuff. I guess I could use Initiate to take out my blood token in response, if they keep up three mana. So something to watch out for. And our opponent concedes, awesome, so kind of a rough start, with our opponent having the right answers, but we managed to claw our way back. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to Harvester into perhaps a Stormseeker first, if we want to be more aggressive. And then a hasty Shaman can make a treasure right away. Bone and black green. Hit for six, so nice bit of early pressure here. Fight rigging, okay, put into fight rigging combo deck. It's gonna work out nicely since we can play a hasty shaman, so we can still keep up infernal grasp, so we can kill any large creatures they might play to disrupt their combo. And our opponent's going to be dead in a couple more attacks. So even if they found some amazing card and have a shakedown heavy here, we can prevent that from taking place. And we should have them on the way back. It's a pretty quick game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems acceptable. Some early removal. Fable can always discard access lands. And now Kalein maybe sets up turn 3 Envoy. Opponent red-white with an Aspirant that dies to Voltage Surge. Seeing the benefit of an instant here over maybe Strangle dealing 3 damage at sorcery speed. Play Kalein. And yeah, against the red-white burn deck. Not too many plays that punish turn 3 Envoy here. Opponent killing Kalein, that's aggressive, but don't mind seeing that. Play Envoy, and then even if there's a Brutal Cathar, we've got Infernal Grasp. So, Valor's Stance is probably the card that punishes us the most. It's gonna be a Raiju. We're fine taking four. Can kill it with Grasp on the way back. And we'll have our card draw engine connecting here. So, we'll start there. Voltage Surge, a cheap answer for Den as well, as we find our own. And then... I guess we just pass with Grasp and Voltage Surge up. Maybe should have Grasped in my turn, in case of Valor stands, but that could also kill Envoy. It's gonna be a Cavalier. Okay, so before Raiju attacks, we wanna Grasp it. Opponent might be keeping up a copy of Play With Fire. So we'll see if they want to race. So they could try and block and then Play With Fire, which would finish off Envoy. I think that's still like a fine trade. It's a 2 for 1, plus we get to connect with Envoy and maybe hit something. Or we could just Infernal Grasp Cavalier, fall to 12, attack. And then probably keep up Voltage Surge, which is maybe still the better play here. Keep our Envoy hitting them. So 
So we'll attack. Bone and down to 10. And hit a Stormseeker, not bad. So now do I feel the need to keep up Voltage Surge? I can probably afford to play a Fable. And our opponent concedes. Too much card advantage from our Zeotaurus Envoy. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems quite good. Turn 2 Kalein sets up turn 3 partners with an extra counter, so that's one of the most explosive starts we're capable of. Turn 1 Mountain could maybe disrupt that, but we'll still get our treasure at least. Looks like they might have a play with fire here. Does make partners less appealing when we don't have a creature to put those counters onto. So put in blue reds, and a strangle takes care of Kalein. Alright, so now we'll just go for Fable, I think. Save our treasure token for later. At least no fading hope end of turn. And then I could see myself discarding one partners to Fable next turn. It's gonna be Prismari Command killing our Shaman. And a Stormseeker is a draw. Alright, so now that we drew Stormseeker, I'm probably okay keeping the land so we can go Stormseeker plus Harvester and get on the board. Draw another partners. Okay, so Stormseeker plus Harvester looks fine. Get something going. And then probably just bump Stormseeker itself in case they have a play with fire here. Although I guess Harvester would have hit for one more. And then the combo of partners plus Stormseeker can add a ton of counters everywhere. Big score, so maybe a Bombardment deck as we see Gambit discarded, so yeah. That could be a real concern. Could also give our Reflection haste. So I guess what we'll do is just play Partners. Partners targets Reflection. Stormseeker targets Partners. Although there might be some interaction here. It's gonna be a Fading Hope bouncing the Stormseeker. Still give Reflection Haste so we can hit for 7. Okay, and then we'll see if uh, Bombardment takes place or maybe some other board wipe, Burn Down the House, comes to mind. It's gonna be a tapped Hall, a Leer, and they still have Fading Hope available. Okay. Decisions, decisions. I guess we just play a Stormseeker here. Could try and take out Leer with our Harvester by copying it with Reflection, but then it would just bounce Harvester in response, which is not going to go over well. So I'll play Stormseeker, move to combats, and see if they have a response. Alright, so two triggers on the stack. Partners probably pumping Stormseeker. Stormseeker pumping partners would be one option. Then they bounce Stormseeker. Can still attack for a bit. Or we could pump Stormseeker with partners and then partners pumps Harvester. So Harvester can attack past Leer. Although if they make the play of bouncing Stormseeker, then I could just use Reflection on Harvester and take out Leer anyway. So maybe that's still fine. Move to combats, and then... Hmm. I guess we're still in a spot where we have to decide if we want to attack or not. So then I would just attack with Stormseeker. Then the opponent doesn't have to Fading Hope, they get to untap with a Leer. But then we can still use Reflection in the opponent's turn, which may be fine. I'll try this. Opponent lets it happen, play tap land pass. 
opponent untaps. At least Stormseeker out of range of a burn down the house now. And then we want to wait until end step to activate reflection so the copy persists through our next turn. But of course our opponent has quite a bit of interaction available now. It's going to be Prismari Command targeting themselves, sure. Discarding another Gambit. Tapped Hazard. And Gambit for 3 mana here. So they would die next turn if they don't deal with it somehow. Sure. Opponent takes their extra turn. Gold span, that happens. Take four, I suppose. Is your opponent gonna storm off and combo kill us here? I doubt it. Big score. We'll make two treasures, that's four mana. But they still need a way to not die to their own gambit. Another big score, sure. Maybe there's like a show of confidence incoming. Button makes blue mana. To bounce reflection. Alright, I guess we'll activate it in response. Copy Harvester. Can only activate this at sorcery speed, so I wouldn't be able to use it in the opponent's turn here. Yeah, show of confidence, so that's gonna make a ton of mana. Although we can still jump with the partners if we feel threatened. Since we have a backup copy. So they found a show of confidence, so yeah, we'll see if they can one hit KOs. Countering their own disruption. Although I guess with Leer in play it doesn't make a difference. Just to maybe increase their storm count. I'm definitely jumping with uh, partners here. If I get the chance. Gold span up to 14, 14. Three cards in hand. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so they didn't quite have enough to get there with the combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Fine hand. Some removal into Stormseeker into Partners. And uh, let's see here. So we can play this on black. Opponent a white anger deck with Initiates. So we'll try and kill whatever 2-drop they play. Hopefully no Thalia, which would throw off our curve potentially. Opponent is red-white. And they're moving to combat, so no Aspirants. In that case, I might just kill Initiate. Because there's not many 2-drops that don't have haste or have some sort of ability that incentivizes them to play in main phase. And I'm going to be tapping out in the foreseeable future, so... Kill Initiate at the cost of 2 life. Not the best exchange. But at least we're on the play and we can maybe keep up the pressure here. And now with an Envoy, playing Stormseeker feels even better. Putin might have a play with fire, just going face. Probably see a Cavalier next turn, but I'm still fine racing when we've got some heavy hitters coming up. And it's not like Stormseeker can block a Cavalier anyway. Okay, so down to 13 we go. And then now, moment of truth. Do we hit something juicy with Envoy? 
Alternatively, can go with partners and then pump each other. Attack with a 3 powered partners and a 5 powered Stormseeker. And then next turn we can Envoy, that's maybe even better. Even though partners could die to a Royal Eruption, would leave a very large Stormseeker and two Haste Enablers, so even if Brutal Cathar shows up, we can still attack with a Hasty Envoy. Yeah, that seems fine. Hit him for eight. So we're definitely winning the race if this continues. So they need to interact. And just Royal Eruption on partners is not necessarily enough. So our opponents missed a great turn two play. They do have Royal Eruption for partners. But yeah, they kind of have to stay back here, and then we still get to smash them with an Envoy. Give it haste. And our opponent's forced to chump. And scoops it up. Yeah, the red-white burn matchup seems winnable if we draw a nice mix of cheap interaction and then get our Envoy connecting. So it has a bit more card advantage than the red-white deck. And yeah, overall, pretty pleased with our Junt's Haste deck, and got to hit a few times with our Envoy, even finding a Workshop Warchief in the process, which is probably our best hit in the deck, so that was quite satisfying. So yeah, if you're interested in kind of a Partners plus Stormseeker Haste deck, then Envoy seems like a natural inclusion. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.